Hey. Welcome to One of Us Live, you guys. We are coming at you again for week three of this frag build. We're live on YouTube and Facebook. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and oh. enable those notifications. You got it. Yes. This is the best day of the week. So thanks for yes, joining us. Yes. This is a, always a good night. Um, and we're going to do some fun stuff of adding some equipment to the frag build. We got build. some great equipment um, to show you guys today. We're going to walk you through it. So Keenan. Roll. Drop that intro. We're Welcome back. back, you guys. Woo! So, Jess. The peop you guys have got to stick around till the end of the stream today because we are giving away some swag. Oh. We're going to be giving away swag to you guys on Facebook and YouTube, so stick around for that. I don't love some water box goodies. Yes. Like, everyone gets real excited, so we'll be doing that towards the end. Um, but, you know, the frag build is what we're on week three of, mm -hmm. and this week we are doing equipment. So we're going to be adding a lot of Ecotech equipment onto it. And also, along with this build, is our giveaway. Yes. Which yes. is like amazing. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So we've already had a lot of people enter, uh, enter into this giveaway. So um, Keenan here will pull up the website in just a second. But we're giving away this tank that we're setting up over this 10-week period. So the FRAG 105.4 plus XR edition. What does XR mean? Wow. It means we're giving away radions. Uh, with this system. So we have the Plus HD, which is AI for this build. We're using Ecotech. So this is a huge, huge prize. Yeah, that's really exciting. Uh, beautiful tank. And um, you see all the episodes as they go are going to be listed on here. And we're basically taking you from A to Z mm -hmm. on how to set up a reef aquarium. If you've never had a saltwater tank before, mm -hmm. you've never had a sump, um, we were breaking it down from, you know, getting your, yeah. uh, receiving your water box all the way through stocking it. I um, mean, we're using some of the best equipment on the market as well. Yeah. What I love about this particular series is that not only is it good for beginners, but e the professionals are going to love this too. Oh, yes. <laughs> because we're using the top end equipment on this build. So, and we're going to simplify um, it enough to where you can use the top end equipment if you've done it, never done it before. Yeah. And then also for all the advanced people that love the gadgets and stuff, this is going to be it for you as well. Yeah. So this is the Ferrari frag tank. I Ferrari? Guess. I like that. <laughs> yes, that is for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to get some equipment on here. Yeah. Um, you want to head out there? Yeah. Let's all do right, it. So we're going to head out to the frag tank now and we're going to give you an overview of all this equipment that we're putting on here. So we're going to get into some pretty good detail here. We're going to show you how to set up the lights. We're going to walk you through the power heads, the return pump, and the skimmer. And speaking of skimmers, <laughs> speaking of skimmers, it smells like a skimmer out here. Yeah, because so our, overflow, our skimmer overflow cup decided to overflow as soon as we were walking in the studio. So right now we have that fresh aroma of skimming yes. filling our lobby. Um, it's delightful, but fortunately you don't have to deal with it. Yes. So, so <laughs> while we're explaining all this to you, we have this nice fragrance in the room. <laughs> it's great. All right. So guys, on this build, if you guys don't already know, we released the Plus XR edition. That means you can actively go on our website and buy radions for your water box. Um, so what I want to do is walk you through the Radions here. So these are the XR15 blues. We chose to go with the blues because they're like the tried and true for growing and coral coloration. You can kind of see here the blue. That's what gives away that it's actually the blue. Um, we've already got them mounted, set up here. They're plugged in. And now what we want to do is we want to show you how to actually program these in using the Mobius app. So the Mobius app is actually what you're going to use um, to program and connect these lights together. It's super easy to use, and I'll walk you through it here. So we're gonna open up the Mobius app. And once we get loaded up here, it's gonna ask you to add a tank. So this is, we're gonna call this the frag. So we're gonna hit next. Now what you see here is the two devices. These are the two lights that are actually over the tank. We're gonna select both of them because we want them to be linked together. So after you select which lights you want to actually add to that tank, you hit next. 
or connecting the, the devices, creating a network within Mobius for those devices. Yeah, and you can see that's them getting all connected and configured by the lights flashing on the top. Um, so once this gets configured here, so the setup's complete. Now this is asking for a password. You can either, you can do this if you want to protect other people from actually being able to get in and, and control your lights. Other people using Mobius, maybe in the area or something like that. Works great for trade shows. So we're going to skip that. Um, now we're going to set the time in which we actually want the lights to run. So I'm going to choose the easy method of doing it. We're going to start it at 11 a.m. And we're going to make the sunset. Uh, we'll just make it 5. 50. We had a little resolution issue, I think, because it's sideways. Um, so we set the time that we want it to actually run, the time frame. And now on Mobius, they actually provide you templates. So the tried and true color cor correlation, uh, coloration template, you know, that's really good for corals is the AB plus. So as, all we got to do is select that. Um, a little hard to see the button up here, but we're going to activate that timing or that template per se. Now, if you actually go into, so basically now we've actually activated that and then they should start running on that schedule. I do need to change it um, to a later time. So there you go. That's, as, that's, how quick and easy it is to actually program these lights. So now these will run from about 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. using the AB plus schedule. And that schedule is really good for coloration. There's a lot of big coral farmers and uh, professionals that use this same exact template. Okay. So now I'm going to hand it on over to Jess because she's going to walk you guys through the, uh, the MP40s which are going on this frag. All right, so we're doing two MP40s on this frag system, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you what comes with it, the features, and then also how to install it. Uh, just real simple. So this is how it's gonna come. This is your MP40 right here. Opening up the box, you have, kind of start from here. This is your controller. This is gonna allow you to set different modes and also your speed. And this is connected to the dry side of your Vortec. And this is actually goes on the outside of the aquarium. This is your motor. This is one of the great features of a Vortec is the motor is actually on the outside of the aquarium, which means no heat transfer. And then you have your internal part of the powerhead. That is your guard to protect like snails and enemies and things like that from getting in. And that'll go on the inside of your glass. Don't put these together. They'll get stuck. So keep them separate. And then you have your power cords and sources here. One thing you do want to note is that it's going to come with some spacers, so it's going to be dependent on the thickness of your glass of which ones you want to use. And fortunately, they've made it really, really easy. They provide you with three different spacers depending on the thickness of the glass, and they even have it marked. So for us, we are that glass thickness over half an inch. We will be just using the gasket. Um, anything smaller, you would have these rubber spacers for on here. And then also includes your easy guide, and then these are actually to help hold the cord. We did install one of these already, so you can see uh, it in place. I'm going to show here. So one thing to note is like I use these here, and it's going to hold the cord up and out of the way so it doesn't pull down on the motor. So I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to install an MP40 on your water box. So here, for this rubber gasket, this is one that we are using, it has a peel off, and you're just going to go ahead and center it on this outside dry side of your power head. So we will go ahead. And like Jeff said, do not put the dry side in the aquarium or in the water, <laughs> <laughs> hence dry side. It is not meant to touch water, so don't do that. I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way. So here, just gonna hold that down gentle. Oop, don't put those together. All right, so we're going to aim this to kind of be exactly opposite of the other MP40 that we have on here. Here is your dry side, and then you're going to line up the 
power head part for inside the tank right there. One thing you do want to note, and which is why I use the cord hangers that are included, is you do not want to set this where the cord pulls down because it's going to have force onto the outside of this. You don't want it down like this because then the controller and the cord are going to pull down on the motor and it causes it to slip. You actually want it to go up and then you're going to use your uh, wire holders that they include to keep it up against the tank um, and not putting any pull basically on the motor itself. And then from there, you just feed it through. You have your controller and con your controller just goes to your power supply and we mounted it here. And this is going to be all your buttons and everything to control speed, mode, and all of that. So quickly, two, three minutes, your MP40 is installed and on your aquarium. So guys, you'll notice that <clears throat> there is somewhat of a controller bo board here inside the frag. This is something that we built here in-house. If you want to learn how to do that, head over to our Facebook group. There are a lot of users doing that. For some of our larger tanks, there's actually aftermarket products as well. But this is, this is a pretty easy project. It's really just a piece of plywood that we painted and cut some holes in it. Um, and it looks great. It's functional. It helps you to keep all that, your drivers and dosers organized. So again, head on over to Facebook, uh, search Waterbox official group, and you can find some good resources there for that. All right, and then next on our list of things to install for our frag is going to actually be our Vectra return pump. A great thing about a Vectra is it is controllable for speed. So you do, and it will tie in together with your other Ecotech equipment, but you can control the speed of the pump. It has feed mode, all those good things. So in the box here, you have your controller, very similar to the um, Vortex, and your driver here is going to do speed, mode, and all of that. Power supplies. One thing you do want to note is for to connect it directly to plumbing, you do want to have it with a screen and barb kit because it comes with just a standard for hard plumbing. So the screen and barb kit is going to allow you to go to the vinyl tubing that's on here. So easy enough. So the pump is connected to eh, a lot of wires. This here. And that is what we will then connect over to the controller. So simple enough, this is just going to go into your return pump chamber on your water box. Very gently, because it is a relatively heavy pump. Place it in here. And then your return tubing will connect up to your return line. And you do have these hose clamps that you will want to secure your tubing so that it has a leak tight right there and you can easily go ahead and cut your return tubing so it's not as long and we'll do that as we go one thing to note when you place your pump is to never have the intake here directly up against the glass to where it would restrict any flow you can also use the screen that comes with the uh, hose and barb kit on that one here this will hook up to the controller I'll just show you on out here so your controller here, go line it up, tighten there, and then we're going basically power to your power supply. And that will also go behind the tank and onto the control board. Now Jess, I did want to mention real quick. Um, we are setting up all this different Ecotech equipment. All of this Ecotech, Ecotech equipment is now shipping Mobius ready. So um, just keep in mind that we added the lights to the Mobius app. You can now actually add the pumps, um, your, the, the MP40s, the Vector and everything to the Mobius as well. And if you want to learn more about that, head over to Ecotech's YouTube channel and they got a tons of videos and resources on how to set those up. All right, next thing that we're going to put on here today is going to be the Quantum Skimmer. Um, so this is from NIOS, and it does come with some assembly required. So we did that ahead of time just because you do want to give yourself probably 10, 15 minutes to put it all together. Um, but real quick, just to kind of go over, for anyone who's never had a skimmer before, is how it basically works and gets put together. Your pump here is, is located inside the body of the protein skimmer, and it is bringing in wa uh, water from your sump through in here. And you'll see you have an airline 
connected. This is what's drawing in the air, which the pump then mixes with the water. And that's going to create all those little micro bubbles inside the actual body of the protein skimmer. What that does is it actually mixes with the organics, the waste, fish poop, whatever you want to call it, and brings it up into the skimmer cup and basically as pure brown waste, which we now smell in our <laughs> lobby. Um, <laughs> and then this is what is considered to be your collection cup. This is what you would remove to then empty and remove that waste product from there. And it does have a little point here that you could put the tube and drain it into something as a collection versus having to take your, the collection cup off every single time. So you do have to assemble, like put the pump into place and put a couple tubes on, but it's pretty simple. And then this And Jess, I do believe we have a, an assembly video on our YouTube channel for that particular skimmer okay. in detail. It is very easy. And then your protein skimmer here is going to go in your middle chamber, which is for your meaty rafters, protein skimmers, all of that. And basically, we're just going to go ahead and set it in place. Take your lid off first. Very careful not to knock it against anything. Here. And then these valves are what you will adjust your water level with, which we can show once it is up and running. Put your collection cup back in. Same thing as with the pump. You may want to make sure your intake for the water is not up against the glass or too restricted as it will interfere with the performance of your protein skimmer. And then that will just get plugged into a power strip once we get it all set up. Boom. Just like that. Vortex, yeah. Vectra, lights, and protein skimmer. Good to go on the frag build. Now so we, we did make that look, like some people said, we did make that look so super easy. But, you know, and we've done this a bunch of times, but the reality is once you, once you really get the, these products opened up and you kind of look through the instructions, it's really not that difficult. If you want, again, more detail in setting these particular products up, head over to Ecotech's channel. They have all of that good information. But as you can see here, it's relatively easy setup. We're going to be ready next week for water right yep and hopefully you know by us showing you kind of how to do it roof it just makes it a little bit easier to understand so it's not as um kind of scary when you first get yeah, it going it's not but as then with all the equipment um it is that easy and yeah this baby is ready for water next week so it's getting really exciting around here for the build yeah. but you know just to have all the nice equipment in place put together it's going to make us filling it and going to running that much easier yeah and look at how awesome that tank looks guys this is the first time we've used all Ecotech equipment, including radions, on one of our systems. So it's really cool. I mean, it's just this build's coming along really well. I hope you guys got some value out of us showing you how to put those different pieces of equipment on the tank. Um, At least gives a, a starting guide just to kind of show them where they go, you know, what's the best way yeah. to place them and stuff like that. Um, you know, because when you get these boxes and you see all these cords and controllers, it's a little bit probably mm -hmm. daunting um, yeah. if you've never had them before. So it all goes together pretty easy once you yeah. know which part is what. Especially if you're just entering this hobby, um, they may not realize how far this technology has come. I mean, the, the, oh the things that you can put into the life support <laughs> systems now, I mean, the LED lighting, those MP40s, the Vectra, that Vectra pump is, in my opinion, the quietest pump on the market. It is, um, yeah. Not only, you mix that pump with how quiet our overflow system is, and tanks have become so quiet. They have, and just so controllable as well, mm -hmm. because it never used to be where you had power heads, you could control the mode and the speed. Your return pumps were basically on, all on, or all off, unless you put like a ball valve in there, and then you heated up your pump by restricting your flow. Um, and you know, internal pumps used to put a lot of heat into the water, which is why yeah. we saw a lot more chillers and stuff. Um, yeah. LEDs that are fully controllable on an app within just like two seconds, you know, change yeah. your settings. I mean, you, you um, guys saw how fast I set that up. I and mean, we, we just plug those lights in, hit a few buttons, and they're programmed. You don't ever really have to touch them again. Yeah, you can change your time if you want. I mean, if yeah. you're going in like, oh, man, I have people coming over tonight. Let me mm -hmm. have it on later. Uh, let me change this a little bit. You just go in there mm -hmm. real quick. You know, one minute later, you've got it changed and you know, to your setting. Um, and there's lots of different uh, programs you can pick depending on what kind of corals you want to do and the look that you like. Yeah, and stuff so like that. again, so. like I said, I, I showed you a really quick setup on that. Head over to Ecotech Marine's channel and they have a lot of Mobius videos that they've been releasing. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get like a bunch of details on like the templates or custom configuration, if you want to change, you might use the AB plus, but maybe you want to change the spectrum or the timing a little bit. Yeah, um, check them out for that. a lot of more in-depth 
videos and yeah. stuff like that on some of the products. This is kind of a quick overview on the products and how to kind of get them in place. So. Yeah, exactly. So, um, I think we, we got asked Jess. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe ask it is Jess? that time uh, where right. I answer your questions. Uh, email in, ask Jess at Waterbox Aquarium. Let's go. Alrighty, you guys, if you guys want to get your questions answered live on Waterbox Live. <laughs> Double live. <laughs> yeah. Uh, email them over to askjess at waterboxaquarium.com. It's getting really popular. We're getting more and more good questions every week. Um, if we don't do it on the show, you will respond back to them. Yes. So the email. I can't answer all of them on the show. So I do pick a handful that we can fit in. And then the rest, I will give you an answer back after the show or the next morning. Um, so your questions are still going to get answered. It just may not always be live. But write them in. You know, we're always looking for questions. And I'm always happy to share my knowledges, as we would say. Mm -hmm. So, Jess has lots of knowledges. <laughs> Take advantage of it. I mean, the, the amount of... Uh, aquariums and fish and just experience in this industry is is very vast all right what do we got today right. for us jess so hi jess i don't have a name on this one. Oh, it's coming from chari chari anderson hi jess water testing should i do it the day before water changes and the day after for accuracy what tests are important to log um you really don't need to the main thing that i've always i always stress is pick a salt that is matching what you want to keep your tank parameters at so if you keep a lower alkalinity or higher alkalinity you know choose a salt that matches that so when you're doing a water changes it's not going to change what that is so if you keep high alkalinity and you choose a salt with low alkalinity it's going to plummet it every time and you're going to test and dose back up so match get something that matches where you want to keep your aquarium or match your aquarium to your salt Mm -hmm. um, and then the main things you want to test for are going to be alkalinity, calcium, magnesium, and then like nitrates and phosphates are going to be your five yeah. main tests that are important. Yep. Alrighty. So he's got he's got a couple questions here. Can live rock be dipped with Sea Kim's dip to get rid of hitchhikers? Um, it's risky. So it's generally used for a coral dip for hitchhikers and stuff. If you do live rock, a lot of the good stuff that you want in your live rock um, is going to also get taken off of it you're going to make it a little bit more sterile the bacteria lives but all the microfauna and little inverts and stuff that you may want will not fare well through the dip yeah a good solution for that in my opinion is look at maybe one of the man-made rocks mm -hmm. like we're using uh in this tank um carob sea has good rock marco rocks things like that yeah that's more i guess more sustainable as well and you ha don't have that risk of flatworms and you know all the bad types of crabs and stuff that you can get it's not a concern at that point and the last question from him is, what is the maximum amount, what's the maximum percentage sh that you should do in a water change? Um, if it is just a routine water change, I say 25% is kind of the max you want to do. However, in an emergency situation, if something has gone poorly, something got overfed or overdosed, um, I mean, technically you can really do 50 to 75%. It's not ideal, but that's more of like an emergency situation on a regular basis, 25%. Yeah. I've always found that frequent 25% water changes is the best strategy. Frequency over quantity, in a, in a way, it yeah. is. Um, and I may have mispronounced his name. It looks like it may have been Charles. Charles. Okay. So we got next question is from Kevin. He says, hey, Jess, what are your thoughts about copepods and phytoplankton? Is it beneficial to add them to your tank for an additional food source for your corals? So, um, number one is the copepods. Uh, they're very beneficial for fish and corals and your aquarium, kind of overall. So, copepods are going to feed things like antheas, butterflies, mandarins, um, and wrasses. So, they're going to naturally pick on them. Most fish will as well. But they're pretty important for those species of fish for their like long-term survival. And then another key point is when the copepods reproduce, it feeds your corals. So they feed off of the reproduction and larvae of the copepods or when they're small. Um, and copepods also naturally help clean your tank of detritus. So kind of, they're perfect in like every way. So they're really, really beneficial. Phytoplankton is a little bit less uh, mandatory because a tank that's established like a reef naturally makes some of its own phytoplankton. That's usually that green haze on your glass. Right. So that's your phyto. So if you're adding a lot of it, you're gonna tend with more green, green, gla green glass uh, green water, that kind of stuff. So in moderation yeah. for that, because yeah, your tank is naturally going to do a lot of it. Right, right. Alrighty. So 
Got another question. No name, but I think I know who it's from. Hi, big fan here. We all know that puffer fish are the superior fish for many types of aquariums, but which puffs do best in what kinds of setups? That's a great question. I wonder who that could have. Come I have from. no idea who the puffer lover could be that sent this in. <laughs> um, for you, our mother puffer, um, <laughs> going to tell you, puffers are great for everything except for reefs, basically. Yeah. Um, they're going to eat coral, they're going to eat crabs, they're going to eat stuff like that, but they have so much personality, um, and you do have some smaller ones like Valentini's, you got your bigger ones like Golden Puffers, um, you know, space is going to be the number one thing to consider, but also if they're really going to be okay with small fish, crabs, corals, all that stuff, but yeah. a tank just for puffers is well worth it. Yeah, puffers are amazing. They're fish. awesome. Um, Keenan, you got a question? Yeah, whenever you're done with that. Like oh, I got one more. Okay, this is from Peter. Hi, Jess. I'm planning to do a 10 to 15% weekly water changes. Would frequent water changes help offset the need for a protein skimmer? Presumably, bio load would have an impact as well. Also, do protein skimmers remove valuable trace elements from the water in an aquarium? Okay, so. Yes, um, to an extent that frequent water changes help alleviate the need for a protein skimmer, to an extent. Usually we see that more of a thing in a smaller tank like a 20 cube, um, whereas like having a protein skimmer is not as feasible as mm -hmm. in um, a larger tank. So by doing more frequent water changes, you can help offset the extra buildup that a protein skimmer would remove. Um, you know, having both is even better because there's a lot of organics and stuff that the protein skimmer takes that water changes don't necessarily take out um, enough. And then you can over skim, but it would have to be like a very large skimmer based upon the volume because then it can kind of take out too much stuff of the water column. But if you have like a smaller cube, frequent water changes, a lot of times you can do it without a skimmer if you're not stocking too heavy or feeding too heavy. Cool. So there you go, guys. If you want to get your questions answered live again, email askjess at waterboxaquariums.com. All right. What you got, Keenan? All right. I got a couple here from YouTube and Facebook. Uh, first one, why point the MP40s at each other? Won't that cause turbulence? Um, with the MP40s, the great thing about them is their flow is extremely varied, and also you can control the speed of them. And a lot of times by having, like, cresty modes, like, they don't have to be exactly away from each other, but they actually will sync together and communicate where well, one's pulsing, the other one's not, and vice versa. So they work together more intelligently than you would think, so that it's not just gonna meet as a constant speed in the middle and cross all this through. I mean, there's reef mm -hmm. crest, there's lagoon, there's tidal, there's all kinds of settings. And if you have two of them, they're working together to make it and not clash. Right. So again, if you guys wanna get like in detail with all the different settings and modes of these. Again, head over to Ecotech's channel. They got a ton of resources. Yeah. So another one. Um, I've never had a saltwater aquarium before, and I'm looking to get one. What are my best options for beginner fish and coral setup? Um, you can kind of look. We've done it on a lot of our cube or cube shows and stuff like that. Some good beginners. Mm -hmm. Our dual uh, cube one that we did a couple weeks ago was really good. Uh, beginner fish, clownfish. Gobies, mm -hmm. Chromis, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And then corals, start with your soft corals and then yeah. work up towards anything with any kind of stony base to it. Yeah, yeah. Start slow um, and just look for those easy corals at the fish store. They can usually point those out pretty easily for you. Yeah. Um, and, you know, use good, clean water and make sure you top off your fresh water frequently. Yes. Uh, this is a little bit of a different one. Can I get the plumbing in a different color? Um, no, you cannot. Our plumbing is made for the model. However, if you go to our Facebook user group, uh, you have tons of people that have modified or added and gone crazy colors and mm -hmm. manifold and all this crazy yeah. stuff. Um, it gets kind of very detailed, so you can find plenty of ways to do it if you want to spice up the look of your plumbing. Yeah, it, you can customize it all. It's just a matter of you know figuring out how and how much effort you want to put yeah. into it. Yeah, we may we, we give you the, the the quick and efficient way to set up your plumbing if you want to modify it. That's yeah, because if you watched last week's episode, we show you how fast you can plumb it with what comes with your water box. And I think it clocks in at five minutes. And yeah. at max, I think. So you're, you're good really, really fast. Yeah. Another question is, when is the actual FRAG 105.4 being given away? So that is, we are giving the frag away on the last show, correct? Mm -hmm. 10 weeks. Uh, week, so that's August 26th. 
Tina knows. <laughs> yeah, you got to tune in uh, to that show on August 26th to win that frag. But we are going to be doing different giveaways throughout uh, this build as well, which you need to tune in to find out what they're going to be. Today it's swag. Woo! We're going to give away a swag pack. Oh. Two lucky people. Whoa. Okay. Ain't yeah. too fancy. Yeah, so shirt, <laughs> stickers, you know, wristbands, all that good stuff. Um, oh. We'll have... Uh-oh. Bye-bye, TV. <laughs> um, I don't know where that one is. <laughs> there we go. Hey! So... Oh, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> we're live, by the way, you guys. So this is the fun stuff that happens oh, while we're live. Works. So on Facebook, we got a winner of the swag pack, Philippe Lamonde. I think that's how you say the last name. So congratulations, Philippe. Woo! Post in the comments. Email support. And we'll send you that swag pack out. And on YouTube, we got Sean Bevery. Is that right? I forgot what I wrote. Sean Bevery, Sean Burry, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. Sean, Sean, Sean Barry. Congratulations, man. Uh, his handwriting, thank you, not so good. Yeah. No. Thank, you for, <laughs> thank you for tuning in um, and, and there it is. to win this stuff and hang out with us. This is, this is a lot of fun. Um, I hope you guys are getting some good value out of this build. I mean, this is an awesome build. Yes, and for the two people that won the swag, email support at waterboxaquariums.com. Let them know you are the winner from either Facebook or YouTube, and they'll get you taken care of for your swag pack. So do reach out to support on that one. Um, and we have, this is like just the beginning. Equipment's gone on. Mm -hmm. The lights are on. Next week we get to put rock, sand, and water in it. Yeah, so next That's week, when it all yeah. starts happening. So yeah. very excited about that. We will um, be doing that next Wednesday, 6 o'clock as usual. Ooh. Yeah, there you guys go. So we're keeping the doors off for most of this build so that you guys can see, you know, the guts, the what's going on underneath. I'm sure at some point we'll probably put them on. Yeah, we're just doing so much with equipment and like how to whenever you get up mm -hmm. and running that we're going to keep the doors off just for an easy view. But this baby is going to get filled next week. So, so stay tuned. I want, to, uh, I want to mention again that, as you saw in that last shot, you can now purchase your Ecotech Radions right with Waterbox. I know a lot of our users um, would buy the tank and they need to go find those lights. So if you're looking to buy the Radions, you can get them right on our website now. They're going to be in stock uh, any day now. We're going to have both the XR15s and 30s. Yay. So um, if you need them, we got them. XR your Waterbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. And Thanks, yeah. and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks, guys.